<laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm Peter, and we're here to make progress, not perfection. But on that way to progress, we need to learn the basics of a character. So today, we're going to take a look at Fang. We're going to go over his strengths, weaknesses, punishment tools, as well as key moves. This guide is going to be a fairly lean guide, and by that I mean I'm not going to go into depth about every single tiny little aspect about the character. That's going to be for a later guide if there's enough interest in the character, so let's get through the basics and see where we go from there. First up we got Strengths. Fang is an excellent poking character, so if you like to play up close and personal and just annoy the crap out of your opponent, he's the guy for you. He's got a wide variety of fast attacks that all lead to more up close pressure. To help with this, he's also got some great low attacks in the game as well. Many of them have built in high crushes and are either plus or neutral on hit. When your opponent has to play into you, it can be incredibly frustrating because he possesses one of the most evasive stances in the game in the form of Kimpo. On top of that, he's got a backswing blow, built-in sidestep strike, hop kick, and as I said before, high crushing, low attacks. Also, to help with his evasion and his up-close game, he's got panic moves. Fang has some of the best panic moves in the game, and they add to an element of mind game, and some of them have built-in evasion. While most characters in the game have decent wall games, Fang has I'd say about above average wall pressure, because he can literally force his opponent into some really nasty 50-50s that all result in good damage. Now, despite all the strengths that I just listed for Fang, he's got his fair share of weaknesses as well, and this is what really makes him interesting, his weaknesses. The majority of Fang's attacks can actually be avoided with sidestep and sidewalk left. It's almost laughable how linear some of his attacks really are. He's also got below average block punishment, specifically in the wall standing department. This was buffed in season four, slightly. It's still one of his weakest aspects of the game though, make no mistake about that. While Fang does have a standard 15 frame hop kick, it's extremely lacking in range. This means that sometimes you'll have to really settle for a non launching punish against some seriously minus attacks. And when it comes to combo damage, yeah, you can guess it. This is not Fang's area of expertise either. He possesses below average, I would say, combo damage. And when he has to get close, this can also be an area that really pains him because he struggles to get in opponents who have good keep out moves or against opponents who have really good movement since a lot of his tools to approach are quite linear. Moving right along, we've got Block Punishers. So starting off, we're going to do Standing Punishers. At 10 frames, Fang has two options. He's got 1-3 and 1-2-2. 1-3 only deals 24 points of damage, but gives you plus 6 frames on hit. 1-2-2, on the other hand, gives you only plus 3 frames, but gives you 26 damage on hit. So this is all up to really personal preference on what you want. Do you want frames more, or do you want damage more? There's no right or wrong here. It's all just personal preference. At the 13 frame mark, Fang has access to his shoulder. Back one plus two. This attack knocks down, wall splats, and breaks balconies. When in rage, back one plus two hold is his rage drive. This will wall splat from all the way downtown and you still have plenty of time to run in and perform a combo. At 15 frames, as I alluded to previously, Fang gets access to his hop kick. This is unremarkable and severely lacking in range. However, he has another 15 frame Punisher now in Season 4. Down forward, 4-3. It has much better range in comparison to his hop kick, grants massive plus frames on hit, doesn't launch, and it doesn't guarantee anything afterwards, but you have enough frames here to work with to mix your opponent up. At 18 frames, Fang has forward 4. Since hop kick, as we previously know, has such bad range, and certain attacks in this game are very minus on block with some pushback, sometimes Fang can't hop kick and will actually need to resort to using forward 4 as a means to launch those attacks. To round out the last of Fang's standing block punishers, he's got a 21 frame block punisher. He's got forward 3 4. For very minus on block attacks, this is going to be your heavy duty punisher. This bad boy reaches all the way downtown from range 3 and there's no move that you won't be able to reach with it. Even attacks with heavy pushback, 
this isn't going to be an issue for you. Moving on, we got while standing punishers. At 11 frames, Fang, like 95% of the cast, just gets while standing 4. There's nothing spectacular here, just a slightly above average while standing 4. 18 damage, plus 7 frames on hit. While standing 1 2. This is Fang's 13 frame while standing punisher, given to him in season 4. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably one of the worst 13 frame while standing punishers in the game. It only gives him 26 points of damage and barely any fucking plus frames. For Christ's sake, it's only plus one on hit. In certain situations, you might be better off actually going for his 11 frame while standing Punisher just so you can get some more frames. At 15 frames, Fang gets while standing three. There's not much to say about this. This is kind of your run of the mill 15 frame while standing launcher with a little bit of a janky hitbox. Every now and then, you're gonna be quite surprised at how this attack whiffs. And last but not least, at the 18 frame mark, Fang gets full crouch down forward at 2. For any heavily minus low attacks and certain duckable strings, full crouch down forward 2 will be your go-to move. It does an incredible 25 points of damage on the launching hit and the combo you get afterwards. Well, it's actually not bad. All right, now we're on to the key move section. First up, we got back one. This is a fast high attack that's widely considered one of Fang's best counter hit tools. On counter hit, you're guaranteed a shoulder for some meaty ass damage. Even when you're trading with attacks, for example, if you trade with a jab, you will almost always come up on top. This attack can be used for a variety of reasons, but you can use it as a panic move when you're being pressured by the opponent, or you can use it as a string interrupter anywhere you could fit a jab, or you can do it on a read. It depends. If you're not using back one though, you're not playing Fang right. Down forward one. This is Fang's primary mid poke to check opponents and to start offense. Despite its similarities to regular down forward ones in the game, it comes with some minor yet big differences. Typically a down forward one comes out in 13 frames and is minus one to minus three on block. Fang's is slower by one frame and is zero on block. This means if your opponent attempts to retaliate immediately with a jab on block, they run the risk of counter hit trading with a back one. And as we established earlier, this is always gonna be in your favor. On counter hit, this attack puts Fang at a whopping massive 39 frames of advantage. While nothing is guaranteed afterwards, it does allow him an opportunity to force a mix up. Back four, this is an extremely important key move for Fang. To account for Fang's linearity, he happens to be blessed with one of the fastest tracking tools in the game, back four. It is a safe, on block, mid tracking attack that acts like a Swiss army knife. Do you need to prevent your opponent from sidestepping? Back four. Do you need a fast mid poke? Back four. Do you need to hit your opponent out of an evasive stance? back four. <laughs> Anyways, the only main weakness is its range and its frames on block, but aside from that, it is a great tool. Forward forward two is a chunky long range mid attack. It is safe on block and covers a lot, a lot of space. So it's a good tool to use to close distance. At the wall, it can splat the opponent for a full combo. However, despite how good this move might look, do be warned that it's not without its flaws. It's typically too slow to be used up close at range zero to one, and the attack is very linear. So don't use this as your only means of getting in against the opponent. Use movement. And since we're on the topic of approach tools, another one of Fang's great approach tools is his while standing one. This attack is only minus one on block, which means Fang still has a lot of options afterwards. He can choose to step, or he can choose the challenge. Fang can also perform this from his crouch dash with the inputs down, down forward, neutral, one. And it grants significantly more range if you were to do it this way than from a regular crouch. As with all things Fang, while standing one is weak to sidestep and sidewalk left. Now let's talk about the following three attacks. Sidestep four, sidestep one plus two, and down forward three. These attacks all excel as mix up attacks and synergize really well with one another. Sidestep four is an unseeable, high crushing, low launcher. This attack is high risk and high reward. The only stipulation for this attack is that it needs a clean hit or a counter hit in order to launch. The best place to use this is at the wall where the opponent can no longer backdash to prevent you from getting that clean hit. 
Sidestep 1 plus 2 is the mid complementary tool to Sidestep 4. While Sidestep 4 is unseeable by itself, some opponents actually may react to Fang performing a Sidestep and duck immediately because they're anticipating sidestep 4. This is where sidestep 1 plus 2 comes into play. On block, it gives Fang plus 1 frame of advantage, potentially meaning that you can frame trap your opponent with a back 1. At the wall, however, this becomes much scarier as this gives Fang a nice wall splat from a mid attack and it mixes really well with sidestep 4. Down forward 3 is a close range, safe on block, mid launcher. It's good, but has really, really short range. As with sidestep 4 and sidestep 1 plus 2, this attack is best used at the wall where the opponent cannot backdash out of its stubby range. I would advise using this out of a sidestep so that you can mix it with sidestep 4. When you do it this way, it's really hard to see what is coming out of the sidestep. So if you ever find the opponent at the wall hesitating or respecting you as a player, make sure to properly mix them up with all three of these options because this can be really oppressive to deal with. Speaking about being oppressive at the wall, Julia happens to be gifted with a safe mid wall bounce. Speaking about being oppressive at the wall, Fang happens to be gifted with a safe mid wall bounce. This move is a great tool for Fang to have as long as the opponent is close to the wall, this move is always going to be a threat. However, the trade-off for having a safe mid wall bounce is that it is slow on the startup and just like everything else Fang, it is weak to sidewalk left. Next up is quarter circle forward 1 and quarter circle forward 1 plus 2. These two attacks complement each other very nicely as one of them is a low and the other is a mid and they both come out of Fang's roll dash performed by inputting quarter circle forward. While this is not a full on mix up, it is a pseudo mix up. Quarter circle forward 1 is a long range low shoulder attack that grants some plus frames on hit and a full on launcher on counter hit. This attack tracks surprisingly well. It also high crushes and deals good damage. Its main weakness however is that it is moderately unsafe on block which means a few members of the cast can actually launch punish this on block. Quarter circle forward 1 plus 2 is a plus on block mid attack that leaves the opponent in crouch. Now that's pretty good. On counter hit, this attack doesn't grant you a combo in the form that uh, quarter circle forward 1 does, but it does allow you to get a guaranteed down 3 plus 4 stomp for 44 points of damage. Now as good as this attack might seem, its main flaw is that if you do hit it at range, it pushes back just a little bit, meaning that if you want to take your plus frames, short range attacks such as jabs and down forward ones are going to whiff when the opponent does a single back dash. So like some of the other tools that we've looked at, this is best used at the wall. Now we have down back three and it is quite possibly one of the best low attacks in the game. It has incredible range, starts up very quickly, has great tracking, high crushes very well, provides chunky damage on counter hit, and gives fantastic frames of advantage on hit. On regular hit, this attack forces both players into crouch and leaves Fang at plus four. On counter hit, it leads into an unbreakable throw animation where Fang is back turned and the opponent is on the ground. Here, nothing is guaranteed afterwards, but a, a mix up is available. The price to pay for such a great low attack is that it is launch punishable at minus 15. This should not dissuade you from using this attack. Instead, you should just use it unpredictably. Since we're on the topic of high crushing low attacks, here's another one, down two. This attack is a great low poke and leaves Fang in crouching. It is a great alternative attack if you don't want to commit to a down back three because, you know, it's minus 15, as down two is only minus 12 on block. However, on hit, it is minus one. So be careful when you're pressing buttons afterwards. On counter hit though, this attack is great as you're guaranteed a crouch cancel into a stomp for some chunky damage. As far as homing moves go, aside from, you know, Fang's back four, he's got forward one plus two. This is a safe, high homing attack. It grants an instant screw launcher on normal hit, but is a little sluggish to come out in 19 frames. However, the range is very good. And the damage, well, it's not good and it's not bad. It's, it's all right. Next, we're gonna take a look at two evasive attacks that Fang has in his arsenal up forward two and back forward one. Up forward two for Fang is a super evasive sidestep strike that he has, 
Fang takes a big ol' ass sidestep to the left and uses a mid strike. Use this against overly aggressive opponents who might be overextending on their turn. While this attack is minus 10 on block, most characters in the game can't properly punish this due to the pushback on block. Only a small select pool of characters in the game can even properly punish this when they block it. Back forward one for Fang is his backswing blow. This is actually really good to use for Fang every once in a while because it can get him out of some really sticky situations where he might have to guess a 50-50. Its evasion is quite good in comparison to some of the other backswing blows in the game, and on hit, it's really nothing spectacular. However, on counter hit, he gets a guaranteed forward forward three into down back three. For the last trio of moves, we'll be talking about attacks that come out of Fang's legendary Kempo step, back 3 plus 4. Kempo 2, Kempo 3, and Kempo 1. As I alluded to earlier in the video, this stance is by far one of the most evasive stances in the game. It's not evasive in terms of high crushing or low crushing or whatever, but rather it's just plain fucks with your opponent's judgment of distance and space, which is in and of itself really powerful. It can make your opponent whiff attacks that they would otherwise have perfectly spaced out. Kempo 2. This is Fang's fastest option out of Kempo. It's a safe on block, high attack that knocks down and leads to a guaranteed shoulder. Use this if you're looking for a very fast option to whiff punish your opponent after evading an attack. Kempo 3. This is a slower yet more rewarding option for Fang. Kempo 3 is his go-to move and it's essentially a slower hop kick. Use Kempo 3 to punish slower attacks that have longer whiff recoveries. It's not safe, but it's also not terribly punishable either on block at just minus 12. And for the last option, I wanted to talk about Kempo 1. Use this attack every now and then to keep your opponent on their toes and to poke at them. A lot of times you'll just be doing Kempo Step, Kempo Step, Kempo Step, and the opponent won't really do anything. They'll just hold back on block. This is where you can use Kempo 1. It's fairly slow low, but it has high crushing. Great frames on hit and on counter hit leads into a guaranteed follow up of forward forward three. So there you guys have it. This is my introductory guide to Fang. I hope this helped some of you guys out who are mm, perhaps looking to get into Fang and not really sure where to start in terms of key moves, what are his strengths and weaknesses, and how to go, go about kind of playing Fang. I know there's a lot in here that I still have left out. For instance, I didn't talk about his stance shifting cloud. I didn't talk about any of his back turn tech stuff. I haven't talked about any of the tech traps and this and that. So I those I kind of left out on purpose because, well, for someone who's just learning to pick up Fang, I think it's more important to actually be going over the fundamental things about the character, the key moves, how to play to his strengths, his weaknesses, and such and such and such. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this. If there's enough interest in Fang, maybe I'll do more in-depth guides and tutorials. Well, until then, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching guys and joining me on this video. Also, thank you so much patrons for your ever so gracious support. Without you, this would have not have been possible. And if you're new here and you like what you see, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon. Below in the descriptions as always, I also have my links to my Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon page. See you next time.